This video is a review of the electrochemistry chapter of the chemical thermodynamics and kinetics playlist. So we start by looking at electrochemical cells where we have an, an oxidation reaction where we lose electrons at an anode on the left of our diagram. And we have a reduction reaction where we are gaining electrons on the right side of our diagram at the cathode. We can keep these two straight by the uh, by the anagrams an ox and red cat and we can keep what is oxidation and reduction straight by the acronym oil rig oxidation is loss reduction is gain these diagrams are always designed such that the anode is on the left and the cathode is on the right so the electrons are going to flow from the anode to the cathode and the circuit is completed by a salt bridge in the middle where porous um, potassium and chlorine ions or other kind of salt anions get the flow from one side to the other. These reactions can be split into half cells where either a reduction or an, an oxidation occurs. Things like nickel aqueous ions getting two electrons to become solid nickel on the cathode or tin solid being oxidized off of the anode to become aqueous tin ions plus two electrons which flow through our wire and our circuit. The cell can be represented by a cell diagram where we have our anode on the left, uh, cathode on the right, and the, sol the electrodes on the outside and the aqueous solutions on the inside. Salt bridge represented by a double bar in the middle. We can define the quantity electromotive force and define the Nernst equation as follows, that the electromotive force of an electrochemical cell is the change in potential energy or the voltage that the electrons experience when their current is approximately zero, which is the voltage on the right side at our cathode minus the voltage on the left side on, at our anode. The Nernst equation relates the EMF of the cell and the Gibbs energy of the reaction, that the change in Gibbs energy of the electrons experience is equal to negative number of moles of electrons times Faraday's constant times the EMF of the cell. We can get the standard EMF of a cell by getting the standard uh, reduction potential of our cathode and plus the standard oxidation potential of our anode. But the standard oxidation potential is the negative standard reduction potential. So what we typically do is look up in tables for each of these half cell reactions, what their standard reduction potentials are. And then we take the value for the cathode and subtract the value for the anode on the left. We can separate that Gibbs energy from the Nernst equation into enthalpy and entropy by the following method. We can take the, entro the entropy is equal to number of moles times Faraday's constant times the partial derivative of the EMF with respect to temperature, just as S is the partial derivative of G with respect to temperature. So then we get the enthalpy by doing delta G plus T delta S and rearranging uh, for those terms. Using electrochemical cells, we can define the Gibbs energy of ionic species and the Gibbs energy of formation of various ions. To do this, we have to define the standard Gibbs energy of formation of a proton, an aqueous H plus ion, to be zero. And using that, we can find all others and define relative values using this starting point. The solubility product can also be measured using electrochemical cells. That's the equilibrium constant for a given metal salt dissolving in solution, where the KSP is, is going to equal uh, the activity of each of the ions to the power of their stoichiometric coefficient, which is also equal to the exponential of NF E0 cell over RT. And lastly, we briefly discuss batteries, where a primary battery is a single-use irreversible battery, like mercury batteries or solid lithium batteries. And secondary batteries are multi-use reversible batteries, things like lead-acid batteries and lithium-ion batteries, which are very prevalent in modern electronics. Links to each individual video in the on-screen annotations, as well as in the description below.